My name is John De Silva. Uh, I'm a DJ and uh, sometime producer, remixer. Incredibly, it's, it's been it essentially created my career as such. I mean, Acid House kind of comes about Chicago in the mid '80s and uh, really hits the shores of the UK in in '87, '88, and that's when I started DJing at the Hacienda. So it's from there. It's been well, basically, it's been downhill ever since. But essentially, that's the start of it all for me, and uh, it's been a, a at times wonderful ride, you know. Um, so it completely influenced my life. So when I was growing up, I listened to all sorts of music. Um, from very early age, I was into music, and it was, I think, the biggest influence initially was Bowie. I wanted to see him when I was 10. Um, and that was 1973 ish, four ish. Um, and from there, you know, I kind of developed, certainly when punk came along, punk was a big thing, and particularly post punk stuff. So I was really into all the bands uh, around that. And they led me into sort of getting into into say let's say commercial black american music initially and then going deeper and at the same time i was getting into reggae and dub reggae and at the same time i was getting into kosmish kraut rock kosmish music and all this so it's it's a whole load of things and it all makes sense when i said house comes along for some reason and it was uh so yeah for one minute i was uh i was in a in bands playing like kind of psych psych rock or as it's now called and next minute i'm, a, I'm, I'm dj and i'll see end up playing acid house first experience of of house as such, really begins in '87, but I mean, it's it's developed so much over the years. Um, uh, from from those early days of acid house and, and techno and what have you. So there's a, there's a you know it, it, the scene is let's say I would say less innocent in certain respects. I mean, it's 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 kind of like football. You know, a lot of the DJs like me and Graham and and uh, people that were around back then were, were kind of the you know we, we don't get we don't see the kind of fees that the DJs get these days. Um, uh, generally, you know, so it, there's, a, there's a kind of a, a bit of a loss of innocence, a lot of commerciality come into it. It's broadened out. You can't really call it underground anymore. That's something. I mean, there's certain scenes, exactly, you know, for example, I, I do a club called Isle of Acid, and now I consider that to be quite underground, you know, um, but you're, you're looking at people saying, oh, we're into the underground, and it's like, well, there's, there's 40,000 people here. How on earth can you call that the underground in, in a big stadium in the States? So, so it's changed a lot. It's gone from really tiny, you know, you know, the, like the, the sweat it out thing we're going to mention later, the, 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 the uh, Anthony and Chris's uh, first foray into rave. Um, that was a few hundred people, if that. So, and, you know, now they're doing to several thousand, 10,000 people. So it's, it's gone like exponentially, gone bigger and bigger. I, I, I mean, I was involved kind of from get go. I was because Chris and Anthony were mates. I did actually Chris's 21st birthday party. So it was only a few years after that that they, they got the brand together. And I think I did some of the shows for, for them and stuff. So it, it's basically, it, it, it really sums up Manchester in so many ways. Sweat it out. Um, this was uh, a little rave, I say little, but um, a little a little back street, but well, it's down down Store Street, down the bottom of Store Street, past where the warehouse project is now. It's in a, in a, in a lockup, in a warehouse lockup. Um, I don't actually remember even getting there. I remember leaving, that's for sure. And it was an incredibly sweaty, sweaty night. Packed, 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 packed. And um, I seem to remember Mike Pickering, it was my, I was supposed to be basically warming up for Mike. Mike didn't play very much because I think he was canoodling with a certain young lady that became his wife soon after that. But I, I did most of the night. I remember that. You yeah, probably, probably can test that, but I seem to remember I played virtually most of the night. And um, the funny is, is that once everybody, you know, it finished at six, things like that, I don't know, it was light anyway. And we opened the shutters at the front. There was just a sea of cans on the floor. I opened the shutters and the, and the police turned up. It was like, a bit late, lads. <laughs> and then it's all lined up. We had it all, me and Mike, and then over the, you know, lads were all lined up and we had to, um, you know, give our names and addresses. And, and there was like four of them were, were on remand for something or other. <laughs> me and Mike walked off scot-free. And that was it. So it was kind of a sweet, sweet ending for for us. It was anyway, not for the four guys that got called off. But yeah. So yeah, it was it was just really atmospheric night. I I I I remember the just phonetic, but great.